Unemployment in the United States stands at almost 9%. Now imagine if that was twice that high. It almost is among young people. A new group, though, is trying to change all of that. Our Josh Levs is checking it out and joining us now to talk more about it. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it's really hurting some of these people. We've done a lot of stories on uh, college graduates and so forth on the CNN newsroom. Remember, we talked about this the other day, how incredibly few college grads are getting jobs now. And, yeah. it's, and it's not just the college grads, it's young people in general. Some young people can't afford college right now, need to work to help their families. They're in the workforce, they can't get jobs. This is the site right here, 80 million strong. It's 80 million strong.org. And here to tell us about it is a co-chair of this group, 80 million strong, uh, Matthew Siegel, who's joining us right now. Matthew with us. Hey there. Good morning. Hey, you can hear me, right? Hi. Hey, hey, good. Yes, good I can. To you. All right, great. So talk to me a little bit. First of all, why 80 million? What's that number about and what's your group doing? Well, 80 million is significant for the 80 million members of the millennial generation born roughly after the year 1980. We are 3 million larger in numbers than the baby boomer uh, generation, 77 million. And the purpose of our coalition is to convene a grouping of some of the largest youth organizations in, in the country to come together and propose solutions towards the youth unemployment crisis. And to do this, yeah. we'll convene a summit in July um, uh, where we can create legislation. And I know you're focusing really on legislative efforts. Let's go to a graphic here because I was really interested in the few points that your group points out. We were just talking about the unemployment there. Check this out. Undergrad average debt coming out of college, $27,000. So, you, you know, young people already burdened this way. And then you also point out that a lot of young people have been targets for predatory lenders. Now, some people say it's been irresponsible young people, but you can say that about people any age. And you have seen that that's a big problem for people your age, right? Well, for, for one, young people, even prior to college, are targeted by credit card companies uh, to basically put everything on credit. And this is not a matter of irresponsible spending. I mean, uh, if you look at the $2,000 in credit card debt that young people average by the age of 24, a great deal of that is for things like textbooks, for room and board for college. Heck, even groceries are a large cost yeah. of, uh, of the debt. So these are not superfluous shopping sprees that young people are spending irresponsibly. Yeah, I mean, there are some, but it's true. The statistics back you up on that. A lot of young people trying to make it through school and end up building up debt along the way. Plus, student loan programs are falling apart. All right, your group has put together a series of goals. We're going to bring them in these thing called side panels here. What I want to do is talk through these four major goals that you have. We're going to start off with this first one. You want Congress, you want lawmakers to bring in support for young entrepreneurs. How can Congress do that? <coughs> Well, we have the Small Business Administration, and we can apply that successful model of, A, freeing the flow of credit for young entrepreneurs, providing tax breaks, and lower interest rates on uh, the loans they take out to start young companies. I mean, ultimately, if we're going to pull ourselves out of this recession, we need to invest in young companies and young ideas, and we need to have a legislative environment that's receptive to freeing credit and, and giving young people some incentive to innovate. It is so interesting. Let's bank through the next two goals here. The second one here is debt deferral. Now, we were just talking about the debt and the challenge there, but let's go to this third one because I find this really interesting. You want lawmakers to help create basically laws and fund programs that will tap young talents. What are the young talents that are not being tapped, say, by stimulus funding? Well, the stimulus funding did create a lot of these shovel-ready jobs, which were quite important, uh, though a lot of these jobs are the same construction jobs that have been around since the New Deal. Uh, but we think there are mission critical areas like cybersecurity, defense jobs, green jobs, jobs that innovate our healthcare industry, which are really forward looking careers that our government can create more vocational training at community college for so that we can immerse more young people into crucial fields to innovate and really tap our generation's technological savvy and so forth. And we hear from, from lawmakers all the time and from the presidency about the, the concern about cybersecurity. Last goal here I want to point to, paid internships. This is interesting because unpaid internships can kind of reinforce an economic status quo. The kids who get them are the kids whose parents can pay for them to have them while they're there. You want paid internships to give more kids a chance, right? This is an absolutely critical issue for us. I mean, we have a, a mentality in this government where only some of the most privileged uh, demographics of young Americans can afford to take unpaid internships where their parents help subsidize their living, their food, their transportation costs. But we need to immerse different perspectives, uh, people from different communities in these jobs, which will give them the practical criteria they need on their resumes to be more competitive when entering the workforce. So we want to give federal grant money 
towards unpaid internships at the federal, local, and city level. All right, I find this fascinating. Really quickly, I want to show a quick clip of video that you all have posted on your website here because what you're trying to do is highlight some organizations that are run by young people. Take a look here. Okay, we don't have the sound here. That's okay. Basically, you're showing them the name okay. of a group here called the Intersect Fund, which is created by young people to try to get young people working for each other. So part of what your site does is not just hey, say, hey, Congress, pay attention to us. You're also trying to highlight programs out there, young, clever entrepreneurs that will build jobs and help the community, right? Exactly. And, and this is a lot about a, a public-private partnership like Obama talks about, and it's absolutely crucial right. that we recognize that young people have an entrepreneurial and socially conscious spirit and we need to cultivate that more and get more young people involved in creating their own job opportunities yeah. as well. I'll tell you, I mean, I'm fascinated by this. I'm learning a lot from you. I learned a lot from your website, 80 Million Strong. We want to hear from you out there. Let's go to this full screen. We'll show everyone how you can weigh in. Um, we got uh, the Heidi blog, which I'm going to show in a second. You got my Facebook page, facebook.com slash joshlevcnn, twitter.com slash joshlevcnn. In fact, uh, Matthew is helping me learn a little bit more about how to use those better. And um, up at Heidi's page right here behind me, you can see we posted this just a few minutes ago. We're calling it the young and the jobless. Here I am. We're calling it the young and the jobless. We want to hear from you. So, Matthew, we're going to follow some of these stories that we get. And, Heidi, I'll tell you, you know, Thank we've you. already been hearing some moving stories from people. We're going to keep sharing them here on the air. It's a key part of what's going on in yeah. our economy now. Yeah, no yeah. question about it. All right, Josh.